Morning. morning. Welcome to this day of worship, um, this beautiful day of worship, I will add. Uh, God has commanded that we set aside today, um, that this is our plan for today, that we um, are, are choosing to worship um, our God this morning. Uh, will you please stand with us as we begin with, I saw the light.
It is so good to be worshiping with you this morning here at Grace Community Fellowship. If you are visiting with us, I'd like to encourage you to fill out a connection card. This is a great way for us to get uh, connected with you, for us to have the opportunity to share a little bit more with you about who we are as a church. Uh, as always, uh, if you have a prayer request or a question or anything like that, you can always use the back of the card to write those down and we'd be happy to respond to those accordingly. And now let's take just a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, I think. Good morning. There we go. Uh, so in Sunday school, we've been talking a lot about Daniel. And Daniel is just an amazing man of faith. We were talking about that again today, how much trust Daniel has in God. Uh, for example, at the very beginning of the book of Daniel, we see that the king has told these guys that they're going to eat the royal food. And Daniel refuses to. He goes to the chief who's in charge and says, you know, I, my friends and I are not willing to eat the king's food. Can there be another way? And he's putting his trust in God to provide another way, which God does. We see also um, the king orders the death of all the wise men because they fail to interpret the dream. And Daniel is willing to go to the king and say, give me some time and I will interpret the dream. I will go to my God and he will give me the interpretation. But, and then we see you know, later on, we always have heard of Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel's great faith. Well, what I was uh, thinking is Daniel has one charge that's really brought against him. And I wanted to start here in Daniel 6. And it says, when it, it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel, the satraps were made accountable to them so the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and satraps by ex his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. And that kind of struck a chord with me because I was thinking, if someone's out to get me, if someone's trying to get after me for something, what would they be able to dig up on me? And if they, if they did, would the only thing they'd be able to come to me is to come and say, unless we can nail him for, what he, for his worship, for how he praises his God, how he follows his God. And that's what I want to have said of me, too, is that when I, I follow my God so closely that I am not corrupt, I am not following the ways of the world, I'm not abusing the offices, I'm not sleeping on the job, I'm not being lazy, I'm not squandering the stewardship that's put in me, but I am being faithful to God to the point where that is the only charge that can be made against me. So that is my encouragement to you today is to, for us all to be more like Daniel, to have great trust in God and follow so closely to God that that is the only thing anyone can find against us is our faith in God. All right, now if we can go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Amen. Will you please stand with us as we continue in worship with goodness of God. So 
The children like to come down. Hi, everybody. So, Everett, you can't answer this question. Does anybody remember what, what type of animals I keep? I have them in my backyard. Squirrels? I do have squirrels. Yes. Bees. Yes, I am a beekeeper. Um, and so yesterday I was out in my hive, and I have some pictures. There's me in my bee suit. I look pretty nifty. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a lot of bees. Um, so just a fun fact, my hive probably has 70 to 80,000 bees in it right now. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, and I like bees, and so I wanted to um, talk about the different types of bees and how that can point us to God. So what's the most important bee in the hive? Hmm? The queen bee. Yeah, the queen bee. If, if the queen bee isn't there, then the hive is, is going to die. It's not going to do so well. A, a what? A normal bee or a worker bee. Yep, the worker bees are really important. That's what, what the, the majority of the bees are. They're worker bees. And guess what? All of the worker bees are female. That says something. <laughs> and the male bees, so all of the ladies are working. And do you know what the male bees do? It's something that I do really well. All they do is just hang around and eat. <laughs> and I think that is a fantastic way to get yelled at. <laughs> so I want to go back to the worker bees because I wanted to show you my bees. I, I would go through and name them all, but I, we don't have that much time. Um, so, yep, in my suit. So the worker bees, um, they have all kinds of jobs, but one of the jobs that they do is they leave the hive and they go and get nectar from different flowers and plants and bring it back, and then that's where we get honey. So I was thinking about Easter and thinking about what happened on Easter morning. Okay, Easter bunny comes. But what's more, way more important than the Easter Bunny? G yes, Jesus rose from the dead, right? Well, after that, Jesus appeared to a lot of people. And then before he goes up to heaven to live with God, he gives us the Great Commission, okay? Now, bees, when they find nectar... It's not like they're just keeping that to themselves and they're not going to keep that away from everyone. They want to tell all of the other bees, hey, go here. So I'm going to ask for Pastor Drew's help because he asked me to do things without any warning. And so I'm going to do that to him. So I'm going to have Pastor Drew stand up and he's going to be our worker bee. So Pastor Drew, I'm going to have you walk in a figure eight. That's an interpretation of an eight. Um, so on that last pass, I want you to, to jog really fast. So not, not here. Now jog really fast. There we go. Okay, slow down. Keep going. Now jog. Okay, perfect. So this is what bees do when they found nectar. And that little part where he jogged, 
it's pointing the other bees, go this way, and that's where the nectar is. So just like with Christ, we should tell others how to get to the good stuff, right? This is the Great Commission. This is from the book of Matthew. It says, therefore, go. Not sit around and eat. Not hang out and watch TV. Therefore, go. And make disciples of all nations. So we, we can learn from the bees, and we can tell everybody that we know about the good stuff, right? And who's the good stuff? Jesus, yes. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for nature and the ways that you reveal yourself to us through that. Um, please help us to go and to tell others about you and your good news. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Good. Won't you all join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we began this week with the mystery and beauty of your heavens as we watched the moon eclipse the sun. And as we witness these events, Lord, it's impossible not to marvel at the power of your creation that you could set these things into motion. And Lord, we close this week with the ugliness of violence and war. And Lord, this is the strange dichotomy of the world that we live in. That the beauty of your creation, the magnificence of what you have created is still filled with the brokenness of man. Lord, this is not the earth you intended for us. This is not the creation that you prepared for us but it is the reality that we live in, Lord, and in that we find and we must take hope that you are always with us, that the beauty of your creation, the things that you have made, the hope that you have provided, the grace that you give us, Lord, is never failing. And so, Lord, we pray for the world today that you would be with all of those who are struggling, whatever their strife may be, that you would give them comfort, that you would show them the beauty of what you have made and remind them that you are forever with them. Be with those who are guarding not only our borders, but around this world, people who are defending the freedom of man. We just lift them up to you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for your church locally and abroad, that you have a following of people who believe your word, who know the promise that you have given us. And so we ask that you would just fill us to the point where we recognize that just being filled with your spirit is not enough, and that our job as the church is to go out into this world that is broken and to spread your love. Empower us to do that, Lord. Lord, there are many among us here today and around us in this community that find themselves in desperate need of your intervention. It seems that everywhere we turn that there is sickness, there is cancer. Lord, and some of these things just don't make sense but we know that you are the great healer. And so we ask that you would strengthen those who find themselves in need. Be with their families as they walk this journey with them. Let them know that they are never taking this path alone. Strengthen them in this time of need, Lord. We thank you so much for the beauty of what you've given us. May we never forget your steadfast love no matter where we find ourselves in this journey, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you do. Amen.
All right. So to give you all a little bit of direction as to where we are heading over the next couple of several weeks in terms of a sermon series, uh, we are going to be doing a sermon series called He Has Risen, uh, just a, a short uh, couple-week sermon series talking about uh, Jesus' his post-resurrection. Uh, from there, we're going to go into a couple of Sundays where we're recognizing some people, uh, our elders, our seniors, and moms. Um, we're getting really close to all of those things. And then uh, we're going to go into a sermon series on First John. And after that, I don't know. So we'll see. But uh, that's the direction we're heading in for the next uh, couple of months at least. So we're picking up today in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are just, we are a people who should be so grateful. We have received much. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to be that, that you would help us to be a people who are full of gratitude a people that are full of thanksgiving and that everywhere we go that we will be praising you and praising your name. We pray that as you die, we dive into this post-resurrection account this morning that you would help us to see the power in a risen God. We thank you. We praise you. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So as I said, this is going to be a short uh, series. He is risen, talking about uh, Jesus after his resurrection. Uh, t- today, uh, we're gonna, there's going to be four points that we're, we're taking. So if you're uh, taking notes, you can write you can number one through four. Um, but I've said that before and had said that they were going to do four points and only had three points or uh, vice versa. But today, I think we actually have four points. Um, Last week, uh, the refrain from last week was that God rolls stones away, that He rolls the stones away in our our lives and the lives of others, that He moves the stones so that we can see the evidence that He is risen. And so last week, we saw that the stone was rolled away not so Jesus could get out of the tomb, but so that the women could enter in that Jesus didn't need a stone to be rolled away in order for him to leave the tomb. And this week, we have kind of a similar account of where these disciples are in a locked room, and Jesus miraculously appears 
with them. And so the, the disciples are, are they're hiding out. They're hiding out together. They're afraid. They're afraid that they're going to get arrested, that they'll be persecuted, that they will suffer the same fate as Jesus. And so they've locked themselves away because that's exactly what Jesus told them to do, right? And he said, you know, go and hide. Be my disciples and go and hide out of fear. Nonetheless, that's what they were doing. And so we have this Uh, this picture of Jesus showing up, and twice he says, peace be with you. Shalom. My peace I give you. And really what this is is demonstrating to us is that the Lord shows up where he wills, often in a mode that is beyond comprehension and it is, you know, and so we could speculate uh, all we want how Jesus entered into this room. Did he like materialize there? Did he somehow, you know, sneak in? Uh, how did he get in there? And we're not told. We don't know the method that Jesus used to get in the room. We simply know that he was powerful enough that nothing, not even locked doors, stopped him from getting in. And so Jesus goes in amongst his disciples, and he says, peace be with you. You know, this is, uh, we see frequently when you know, angels throughout Scripture appear, that they say, fear not, fear not. This proclamation from Jesus is, is even, you know, it's the peace contained in that is the fear not. Peace be with you. And, you know, this is a customary greeting, the, the shalom. It's when you would have met somebody on the street or uh, as you ventured to their house. Or It's, you know, shalom. You know, hello, hi, peace be with you. But contained in these words is even more than that. You know, the disciples are hiding out of fear, and Jesus is saying, put all of your fear away. What I have come to do is done. You're hiding out of fear and you don't realize that I have conquered everything that you really should be afraid of. That I have conquered sin and death. That when I hung upon the cross and I said it is finished, that it is finished. This is what Jesus is communicating to His disciples. To put all of that fear away. Everything that Jesus had told them has come true. So twice, peace be with you. And then it says that he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And so we have this, you know, Jesus um, showing up miraculously and then saying this, phrasing this, it's a little bit confusing. And it's especially a little bit confusing for us as, as Christians now because, you know, for many of us, it was, well, wait, I thought the Holy Spirit didn't come until Pentecost. Well, yes and no. Uh, we'll talk more about that because Pentecost is coming. Um, But here, Jesus is empowered and he's recommissioning his disciples. You know, he could have condemned them. He could have, you know, shaken his uh, finger at them. He could have used his familiar comment, oh, you of little faith, uh, to his disciples. Why are you hiding? Uh, You know, like, do you not get it? Like, you have already been told that I have been risen. Like, the women, they like, have seen me, and you're still hiding. (coughs) But instead, he recommissions them, and he highlights really what is the most important part of his ministry. Yes, Jesus came to feed people, to heal people, to be amongst the people, you know, teaching them. He raised people from the dead. He fed thousands. But that wasn't the main point of His ministry. The main point of Jesus' ministry was the forgiveness of sins. 
And so as he speaks to his disciples and he says, as you forgive people, they will be forgiven. And what he's talking about is, is this, this idea that the preaching of the good news and declaring the effects of it, and for those who believe in it, will experience forgiveness. And rejecting it, no forgiveness. So as we seek to follow Jesus Christ, we are to model after everything that He does. We are to picture or make our lives really a reflection of Jesus. And so we know that we're supposed to do things like care for the poor, you know, help widows in their distress, uh, to, uh, to do good things for people, to serve people, to preach the good news of the gospel. But here it's, it's taken to that next step that Jesus is saying that we are to forgive the sins of people. What's key to note here is that this is said after the Holy Spirit has been breathed on them. And so this is not through their power, but this is through the power that is offered through God. Because God forgives sins. We simply make the proclamation. And so if people hear the gospel and they repent, it is right and appropriate for us to say, you are forgiven. Because as we preach the fullness of the gospel and our lives fully reflect Jesus, is that not something that Jesus would do? As Jesus would say, your sins are forgiven. And then on the flip side of that, as if we're sharing the good news of the gospel with someone and they say, I am not going to believe it, then we also say, have to warn them of the consequences of what it looks like to not be forgiven. And so Jesus is inviting his disciples and us into this idea of following after him. Missing from this whole conversation is Thomas. We don't know exactly why. Maybe he was off doing something else. Maybe he was doing some errands. Whatever. But he says, I'm not going to believe until I have proof. And eight days later, Jesus shows up and he says, well, here's your proof. Do everything that you said that you needed to do in order to believe in me. You know, check it out. I really have the holes in my hands. I really have the wound in my side. It is very much me. And so Thomas doubts, but he immediately declares who Jesus is. Not just his friend, not just his Savior, but his God. And Jesus, you know, he commends him. He says, yes, you are right in saying this, but he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You know, Thomas, you know, some commentators say that, you know, Thomas asks the question or asks for the proof of, of the generations, that this is the same thing that many of us, that for generations upon generations, have asked of God. Where's the proof? Where is the proof that you exist? And we seek it, we look for it, we look to things like science and evidence and rationale to prove the existence of God. Here Jesus says, blessed are those... Who, who believe in me without seeing. Elsewhere, Jesus says, blessed are those who come to me as little children, who believe in me like little children. Children have a tendency to believe things simply because you tell them that they are true. Jesus invites us to have that same type of faith where we believe in him because we have been told the truth. So all of this has applications and implications for our life. First of all, God has the ability to show up in our lives no matter where we are. 
It doesn't matter what you're doing or what you've done or what's being done to you or what doors you've locked yourself behind. It doesn't matter what fears you might have or any other emotion, but God has the power to step into your life wherever you are, no matter what doors or chains or locks that you have put in place. Is that He can step in and begin to work. And that He extends you the same peace that He offered His disciples, saying, it is done. Peace be with you. Fear no more. There is nothing that this world can do to you that can diminish the fact that I have come to save you. And if we are saved and we believe in that, then we need to preach the fullness of the Gospel. We need to tell people that He has come to rescue them and offer them forgiveness of their sins and to assure people of that forgiveness that He paid the price in order that our sin and shame might fall away. That we can call ourselves sons and daughters of the Most High King. Your sins are forgiven. And blessed are we. We have not seen God. We have not seen Jesus. We've seen His evidence, have we, have we not? We have we have not seen him. And so blessed are we because we believe without seeing. Friends, that is my prayer for us this morning is that our faith would increase more and more as we believe even without seeing in order that we might share that belief. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the peace that you leave with us. Thank you for meeting us wherever we are. We pray that you would help us, that you would empower us to preach the fullness of the gospel and to be reminded of just how blessed that we are. We thank you. We praise you. And we pray these things in your son's holy name. Amen. I have just a few announcements for you. Um, George Wiener Sr.'s uh, Celebration of Life is going to be here at the church Saturday uh, at 11. Uh, immediately following that, there is a meal, which you all are invited to. Um, but we also need uh, still some people to sign up on the Sign Up Genius to bring uh, side dish items for that. Uh, and so that was sent out in the weekly email. If you have difficulty uh, accessing that, but you would like to um, still send something, uh, you can contact me or Tommy in the church office. We will help you get signed up to do that. Um, just a great way for us to, to show um, the love of Christ. Also, uh, Kylie Altick, her dad, has been on uh, the prayer chain. I know many of you have been praying for him. Uh, he has started, uh, or he will start chemo on the 10th. What is today? He did start. He's, uh, so he's going to have uh, two more uh, rounds of, of chemo and then surgery to remove uh, the tumor. Uh, so continue to be praying for him. Um, Remember, we have uh, Wednesday night activities, so that's the meal, that's WOW, that's youth group. Uh, remember, you can show up for part of that or all of it. It does not matter. If, you, if you're just hungry, uh, show up and, and just eat. Uh, if you just want to hear about God, just hear about God. Uh, if uh, you want to do all of it, do all of it. Uh, if, you know, there are people who show up on Wednesday nights and they just talk to people. That's what they do. Uh, and that, that is, uh, you are welcome to do that. Uh, our doors are open. Uh, please come. Uh, there will be a mission trip meeting today uh, at 2 o'clock in the fellowship hall. And so, uh, so many of you have said, oh, uh, the, the Mexico mission trip sounds like a lot of fun. I would like to be a part of that. Uh, this is your opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, showing up today is not a commitment uh, on any level. 
Uh, showing up today is just finding out more information about it so you can make the decision uh, on whether or not it's something that you would like to do. Camp Chippewa Volunteer Day uh, is April 27th. Uh, so uh, those who are serving are going to meet here at 7.30 in the morning, uh, head out to Camp Chippewa. There's going to be some worship, a time of prayer, uh, and then they said there's service projects for people of all ages. Uh, so they have projects lined up. That they, they, there's going to be lunch provided. Um, you can, um, so you can sh show up at 7.30 and caravan out, or if you have something else going on, uh, you're welcome to join later on. Uh, I will not be there uh, because I am going to be at Presbytery, which is in Brandon, South Dakota. Brandon, South Dakota. Uh, and so you can pray for me as I travel there. I will be back uh, for Sunday. Graduation Sunday is May 5th, so we are going to recognize all of our graduates. If you know someone who is graduating, could you please let us know? So there's a QR code that you can scan. Uh, if you're like, what in the world is a QR code? Uh, just tell uh, Deidre or I. Um, even if you think somebody might have shared with us, uh, please, um, we can only recognize the people that we know about. Um, and uh, I know for, for me, at least, uh, my brain is full of all kinds of things, and so I don't always remember things. Uh, and so if you could help us remember, uh, we would appreciate that. Any other announcements? Deidre, Yes. Our VBS this year is in June. Miranda, stand up. Miranda is our director. So um, there are signs hanging all over with the, an, a QR code. Um, but uh, on our website, too, you can sign up online for your kids or grandkids or cousins or neighbors or friends to, to come. But also, if you want to volunteer, there's a, a sign up there on volunteering. And we, Miranda's starting to put together people to um, to volunteer and do things and she'll have more information soon but we just wanted you to we've been starting to talk about um, getting it planned so if you want to volunteer lots of places you can do that for anything. For anything. you don't even have to like kids right you, to, to help with VBS yes okay I think that's all of our announcements let's continue to worship together uh, if you'll please stand with us uh, we're singing a new song this morning that I think all of us really enjoy, so we hope that you do as well. This is Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me.
Friends, go in peace. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise